Before we start implementing any of this in Touch Designer or creating our website, first I want to show you a tool called WebSocket King. This will help us debug any of the data that we send through our WebSocket. So to get this started, go ahead and copy the URL from the Heroku app, and you'll notice that there's this plus mark here for connections. You can paste in the URL, and if it included HTTPS, make sure to delete that, but you'll need to start it off with W, for some reason the cursor jumps to the very end, so you have to go back, W, S, S, colon, slash, slash, and then at the very end, you can specify colon port 443. You could run the code that hosts the socket server locally on your computer, but because we've hosted it through a service like Heroku, we're able to run it using a secure connection and we have, because it's a secure connection, we use port 443 instead of a non-secure connection, which is I think port 80. When we hit connect, this is the handshake that takes place to open up the WebSocket connection. You might notice a message coming in occasionally that says ping. When we actually implement this communication in Touch Designer or in our website, we'll need to send a message back that says Pong. And I've programmed the server specifically to listen for that message and not to broadcast it out to everything else. And we do that to keep this connection alive for a longer period of time. So right now, connection one we can think of as the website. Let's go ahead and make another connection. So I will disconnect here so that I can copy the URL and then I'll reconnect. And I'm going to paste in this URL again and connect. So now we have two different clients that we can send and receive information from. The data that we can send through the WebSocket, I've configured specifically to work with JSON. So you could potentially send in like numbers or values, but you'll notice if I send this in, it doesn't get received on the other end. It's looking for a very specific format. So you can look it up, it's called JSON. It's a way to format data that is commonly sent over the web. The way that we can structure it is by using curly braces and it has a key value pairing where the key is the name and the value is the value associated with that key. So we can say something like, this will be our test. And then the value could be a number. And if I send that, you'll see it gets received on the other side. One thing to note too is when you're working with socket server king, I can't use the single quotation mark here. Um, that will, even though if you come from a programming background, um, this could be interpreted as a string. It's just working with the double quotes. Okay, so this is great. This allows us to be able to test out sending a WebSocket message, and we know that we've received it over here, so we know that our, our data is formatted correctly. Let's look at some other things that we can send. We can also send text. Notice that if I start just typing random characters in here, that's not gonna work. You need any text that you wanna send is gonna need to be closed in quotation marks. And we can also send multiple key value pairings by using a comma. And then we'll do the same format. So this is gonna be another key, let's say test two. And then we have a colon, and then this is gonna be the value. You can continue to add more data here. When we're sending data over to Touch Designer, we'll do something like this. We'll have slider one, and then we'll be sending over the actual value of it. And I would recommend that you store things like button clicks as instead of sending a Boolean, like a true or false, I would send just one or zero because when you're loading that into Touch Designer into a chop, it'll be a lot easier to work with numbers instead. One other piece I wanted to point out is that I've set up the Touch Designer component so that if you add in any extra information, so for example, let's say we add in a new one called slider three or slider two, it will automatically add in a new row right here and pass in that value. And you could use another chop to select out that specific value and do whatever you want with it in Touch Designer. All right, so I think we have enough setup to be able to debug and make this whole TD component from scratch. 
So let's dive into it. <laughs> 